All right, so today we're gonna to show you how to use one of these, something you probably haven't used in a long, long time. This is a framing square or a carpenter's calculator, all kinds of neat things you can do with these guys. But we're gonna make a common rafter. So if you're building a shed, a dog house, anything like that, we need to be able to make two cuts. A plumb cut on each end, down the center, and then one of our cuts right here, which is going to be our bird's mouth or our seat cut. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is, so this is what we want to end up with. We want to end up, we're going to pretend that this amount right here is going to be our shed. So what we need to do is measure the run or the span, sorry, the span, which would be our complete building. So from one end to the other. Now this would also include siding. If you're going to have siding, go all the way up to the bottom. So if you want your siding to be underneath your roof, you want to make sure you include that. So we're going to call this right now, for our demonstration, our mini structure here. This is three feet, okay? So what we need to know is what we call the span, or the, the run, which is half the distance of the span. So the span is the full building, and we need to know half the distance. Now, once we have these information here, so we know that we're three feet is the span, half of that distance is a foot and a half. Now we can expand it out as big as we want to go. So we can make a really big building. Now based on rafter size and things like that, you're gonna to have to use code. But for most situations in a 10 by 10 shed, that's not gonna be a problem. So what we're gonna to try to do is end up with a structure like this that has two seat cuts, two plumb cuts in the middle and off to the side. Now the one thing you might want to do is a lot of times you're doing yours, you'll be having a, a center ridge pole that will go all the way down the center and will actually take up this distance here in the middle. So you, you'll have, you can take that out afterwards or before and it would do the three quarter on each side. So you can take out that because that would actually be sitting down the center. So you can we usually, I usually cut it afterwards if I'm going to put a pole in there. Now, we just need a template for our first one, so we only really need to make one of these. So let's get these off to the side and start with some math here. Now, we need to pick a roof pitch, and the pitch of the roof is the distance over 12 inches, so if we have a 12 inch system so we're 12 inches what we always use and the amount of rise that's going to happen over that distance so in this distance we're going to use five inches now why do i like five inches in building a roof for any kind of a basic structure code says that anything for a 412 and below is going to have to be double sheeted so we're going to have to put two layers of felt on there also i like 512 because numbers are real simple it's 22 and a half degrees is our angle cut, which is real simple if we're using a chop saw. Most chop saws have that as a stop point. And then also that it's 13 inches. So it's a standard number if I want to do the calculations and we'll show you how to do both ways of doing it. So we're gonna start with the step method, which is basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our angle Everybody know everybody's got a speed square sitting in their pocket. So we're gonna go ahead. We can do it a couple different ways here. We can either use oh sorry. This guy here. So we've got it. If we're looking on our speed square, we go to the five of the common rafters. So most of them will say common. So we'll say it says common top cut. So we want to go to the five, five twelve. And I always use these little acorns or step guides. I put them on, and then I'm gonna go ahead and slide it out to our measurement to make sure we're in good shape. And that allows us to have that edge cut, and we can go ahead and mark that. So we've already cut this particular one to that number, which if we look really close, and we actually set it on there, we know that it's 22 and a half degrees is actually what the measurement is. So 22 and a half degrees is what our, our 512 pitch is gonna be. 
makes it real simple on the chop saw. So we're going to start. We're going to go ahead and put our little peanuts on. We're going to do a 512, and these are set a little bit farther than that just to make sure that happens. We're going to slide that all the way over to the edge here, and we're going to make a mark. So let me see if I can get that a little closer to you guys. We're going to make a mark at 12 inches on the speed square. Now we know that if we're going to do for every foot, we need to do that every single time. Now we know it's five inches at this point, or six inches because we're half a foot farther. So we're going to do one and a half feet. So one step of 12, and then we're going to go, we're going to reset it to the mark. So we're at five here again. So we're at five and 12, and we're going to mark it at half a foot, which is six inches. And we're going to make, make our next, this is going to be our plum cut. So we're going to go ahead, move it over, and we make our plum cut at that six inches. Now most of the time you're going to have uh, the rafter extend out farther. And so we can do this, let's say we want to make it six inches. We can go ahead and mark out, oh we'll do five inches just for this just for us right now, we're gonna go ahead and mark it at five. So if I mark it at five, I bring my, my five again on here or whatever measurement you're using for your roof and make it again. Now let's say that we wanted to take that and we know that we're gonna be putting a fascia on that's inch and a half. I can take this, the framing square, since I know this is an inch and a half, I slide it in and I can cut it again and I know then I'm going to cut this away and this will eventually be a piece of fascia on the edge that's going to hold everything on my outside. Okay, so this is going to be our main cut. So now we need to sit there and make our bird's mouth or our seat cut. Now there's a couple ways of doing this and a couple theories of doing it. You can do it a few different ways. We can take and do some math. Okay, if we want to do it a little, little bit more, if you're using, let's say, a, um, a speed square like this, we can take and we're going to do a triangle. So we know there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So if we sit there and we take our triangle, and we know that we have a 90 degree cut is what we want to be because we're parallel with the ground. So we're 90 degrees. So that leaves us 90 degrees. So at 90 degrees, we take away our 22 and a half degrees, which will give us what's left over, which is 67. So it's, you know, we know one's 90. We know the next one is gonna be 22 and a half. I'm sorry, this is upside down. So we know our next point's gonna be 22 and a half. So what's left over is 67.5 degrees. So it ends up being we have our, our three points of our triangle. So if we do that, we can do it a couple different ways. We can know that a lot of people like to make sure that we're out here in front of all the cars here. So we know that a lot of people like to have their seat cut three and a half inches uh, because they're gonna be using three and a half inch walls. So we could sit there and we could mark it with a, with a piece of board here um, and say we want it to be three and a half inches wide. So if we're going to do that, we take it, we set our speed square. We don't need the nugget or the acorn if you don't want it. And you can run it along until you line up three and a half inches on your line. So, and we could cut it that way. Now, a lot of areas require that you beam no more than one third cut out of the actual board. So if we sit there and we do that, one third of three and a half is gonna be, you know, 1.6 if you're using a calculator, which kind of comes down to about one, uh, one and an eighth inch. So if we measure one and an eighth up, and we, 
and we measure up, we're going to go ahead and cross over. We're going to go ahead and make our seat cut. So we can, if we were doing the three and a half, it would come out to here. One and an eighth comes very, very close. And if you're going to go ahead and use this on a barn, it's a little easier to make it a little stronger versus a little weaker. So we're going to go ahead and make it, you know, so if we were going to do it with the, you know, with the three and a half. Now, if we have a two by six, using the three and a half is not a big deal. But a lot of times we want to stay within that one third. So we're going to go ahead and use it for this one. So we're going to go ahead and go over to the chop saw here. And again, because we're using the chop saw, make sure you got all your little chunks out. I can just take my chop saw, and most chop saws have a 22 and a half degree angle cut. We can go ahead and cut. We can go ahead and cut this. Now, a lot of people use a skill saw to make these two marks. They use a skill saw and skill saw up. And then what ends up happening is then they have to come back because the blade is round and come in with a jigsaw or a hand saw to finish it. I think it's easier just to use a jigsaw to begin with. Now, not all jigsaws are created equal. So I'm a big fan of the DeWalt battery powered version or when I'm using plug-in tools, I use my uh, 1590, you know, Bosch jigsaw with the clamps and everything. That makes a really square angle. But for this, such a small angle, these work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and make my first cut. And then make my second cut. Okay, so now we've cut our seat cut, or our plum cut on this side, as you see here, and cut out this way. We're able to set it down on, and as you can see, it's nice and flush. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these guys, because this is one of the ones that's done at inch and an eighth. We're going to slide that guy in. Now, as you can see, if we look down close on here, we're flush at both corners. We're nice and 90 degrees, and we're perfectly along the center here. Now, if we wanted to, we can take a, a level and lay it along this line, and we can see that our center mark, since we made that with a square, and we go straight up, as you can see, it's perfectly centered on the top to the bottom. So it makes it so if I was to go ahead and put a board in here, I could go ahead and do my layout just normal on 16 inch centers, no problem at all. Now again, the other way we could do this is with a little bit more math. It, let's say we don't own a framing square. We could use just our, um, just our, our uh, speed square. So if we wanted to just have a speed square. We could do it in the same way. Now what we do is we know our measurement, okay, across the top, so to get our, our run here of our rafter, our length of our rafter, is we can sit there and we know that if you take, and you actually look on the framing square, the framing square will give you common, rafter runs by foot, and if we come over here to five, it's 13. So this is why I like having these, but if you you can do a couple different things. You can just look it up. A lot of rafter books have this information just in them. So if we sit there and we take from 12 to 5, and we actually take our tape measure and measure that distance, we find out that that's 13 inches also. So we can do it that way if we don't have one that actually has it on there. So whatever roof angle you want to do, if you want to do something that's not exact, you can actually just measure across and have that angle. What that gives you is if we want to do 13, and then we do half of 13, which is six and a half, and if we measure over, which ends up being 19 and a half, even though we cut that rafter slightly different, we're still using the same math. So we end up with 19 and a half on the dot of our standard cut. 
makes it real easy to make your cuts if you're wanting to do real long ones and if it's you know if it's a 15 foot long rafter you don't have to sit there and do it 50, you know the step method 15 times you just do the math works out the same way both ways and then again you don't need the little the little peanuts but i think they're well worth it especially if you're going to do any kind of um, work with building stairs or anything else like that what i like about this is you don't have to use the math um, when I first started building sheds and buildings and things like that, I was using the math. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and that takes a calculator. Well, what did we do before we had advanced calculators? We had the contractor's or carpenter's calculator. It gives you all the things you're going to need, and we'll actually talk a little bit more about you know, framing squares in another video. But these are great. You should have these laying around. I'm a big fan of the aluminum ones that have the nice, you know, pictured ones. I have a bunch of the steel ones laying around. They're nice and rusted and oiled up to kind of keep them from rusting any further. But I've built lots of stairs and lots of roofs just with this information versus using a contracting calculator and everything else. And truthfully, I found this system, the step system, to be more accurate. So, uh, as always, have a great day and thanks for tuning in.